Hi there, my name is Andy Young and I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitec in Auckland, New Zealand. And welcome to my Andy Mechanic uh, catalogue of videos on YouTube. Now on this one I have got a Yamaha Grizzly 450, 2014 stroke 15, I don't know which, uh, on the hoist. And I'm going to be doing the overhaul, well not really an overhaul, I'm going to service the front brakes. Now the front brakes are caliper brakes. On this particular Grizzly, it doesn't have any external rear brake calipers or drum brakes. The rear brake is done internally as part of the final drive system. Uh, and it's a, bit like, it's a bit like a wet clutch style system inside there. And uh, I'm not going to cover that in this video. That's something very, very specialist. And there may be a separate video about that later on. So this one is covering the front calipers, taking them off, checking the brake pads and how to um, grease the sliders, how to lubricate, not grease, how to copper paste, in fact, the sliders to ensure that those floating calipers uh, do, in fact, float with as little resistance as possible, which will maximize braking efficiency and equalize pad wear. Does that sound pretty professional? It does, doesn't it? Okay, right, so we're gonna head over to the bike and I'm gonna take one of the calipers off. I won't do both to the camera, I'll just do one, pull it off, I'll inspect it, and I'll show you where to put the copper paste as part of the service and I'll also cover the things that you need to look for that can be problems. Okay, here we go. Okay, so we've taken the uh, the front wheels off. This is the driver's side front caliper. It's driver's side, rider's side front caliper. And it's retained by two 12 millimetre M8 bolts. One here and one down the bottom. Now, it's normally quite tempting to undo those first, but before we do that, we've got quite a bit more to do. Um, we're going to be taking the pads out, which means we need to remove the pad retaining bolts. And there's two 5mm um, Allen key size bolts that run along here. And they have threads into the caliper body. And they're often pretty tough to undo. So, just give that a crack off now. Okay, that one's good. And that one's alright. Okay, the bike's only a year old, so... Um, if we get older bikes, you know, five, six years old, that have been working on farms a lot, these can be absolutely seized solid, and I have had to drill them out in the past. Not fun. In fact, we had to replace one caliper on a, on a Grizzly at one point. Okay, now we're still not finished. We need to remove this uh, rubber, uh, rubber blanking uh, grommet, I suppose you can call that. So we'll remove that, and again, inside there is another allen key now this time it's a six millimeter not a five and that basically is going to remove one of the sliders because due to the design of the caliper we can't actually remove the pad carrier with that in situ it's just the style of the caliper there's so many different styles out there and on this particular one this is just what you have to do okay so that's cracked off and that's now loose we can now remove the caliper, so we've got the top and the bottom bolts. Let's put the bottom one first. Now these should be retained with thread lock. And it is normal in the Yamaha factory for them to put some blue thread lock on these. But no, that one is bone dry. So we'll be putting thread lock on there when we put the whole thing back together later on. There we go. Okay. Two. Right, now, wiggle that off now. And we can remove the pads. Let's get those out of the way. We don't want to contaminate the brake pads. Uh, they're in good order. And any kind of grease and lubricants on those will only contaminate them which will mean we've got to replace them. And you see the corrosion on there, look? We've got to clean that up. And number two. There we go. Excellent. Right, now the brake pads themselves, just take note of which is the inner and which is the outer pad. And you'll see on these, the inner pad, the one that runs on the piston of the caliper, has got an anti-rattle shim on it. And the brake pad, the outer brake pad that sits against the claws of the floating caliper, 
doesn't have an anti-rattle shim at all. And they're in really good nick. They're fine. We can reuse those. Okay. So our next step is we need to remove the remainder of this pin that sits in here that we cracked off earlier on. And here lies the joyous fun. Okay. So we can pull that out. And we need to get that boot, there look, over the end of this. Otherwise it's going to get trapped and dragged in with the bolt as we undo it. There we go. Okay. All right. So you can see here, look, how that boot is getting dragged around with the bolt because there's insufficient lubricant. Now, I don't want to use CRC spray on there because these things can react to CRC spray. But we do need to put some kind of lubricant in there to prevent that from happening. I don't want that boot, any risk of that boot getting damaged or torn. If I can just pull it away from that corroded area with the screwdriver, there is a little bit of grease left on there. And hopefully that's going to prevent... There you go, look, it's got some extra grease on there now off the slider. And now we can finish that off. Now, just remember where the washers are. We've got like a little metal washer there. It goes on first. And we can now remove what we call the pad carrier. So we've got two sliding elements. We've got one here, which is pretty good. Yeah, there's plenty of grease left in there. And then we've got this other one, this one here which we can't remove this way. It has to go out of the back of the caliper. And we're going to have to remove that because we need to put some grease on it. But you can see you can see the slider here, look. Okay, so we've got to push that back all the way through, but unfortunately, that boot gets trapped. So we need to flick that boot over the end of the slider without ripping it. And that's the fun bit. Joyous fun. Okay. Halfway. Almost. There we go. Right. Now we can withdraw, uh, withdraw that from the back of the caliper. There you go. Okay. And you can see here you've got a a grease well. We're going to clean that up, put fresh grease on it, stick it back in again. And with the other one, with the other slider, all we need to do, again, give it a clean, and this has the grease well running along it, and we'll put some fresh grease on there and put it back together. Cool. Okay, so just cleaning off all the old grease from the large of the two sliders. That's that one pretty much done there, look. Now the thing to bear in mind with these calipers is they don't get as hot as a car brake pad, uh, a brake caliper. Uh, the brakes on quad bikes, you've got quite a lot of engine braking and when you ride them most of the time you're using the engine braking to slow down as opposed to the actual brakes of the vehicle. Whereas in a car, especially automatic cars, people are very much using the brakes a lot these days. <clears throat> right, so a bit of grease. That just goes on there. Don't flood it with grease because it's all going to come oozing out later on and you'll have to clean it all off because you can't risk getting grease on the brake pads. That's that one and of course the larger one. And try, try and fill that well, that central well, with grease. There we go. Excellent. Right. Done. You don't need tons of it. Okay. So now we can get the slider again and we can reinstall that into the caliper. It's important that you just work that grease in. Make sure that the vast majority of it's on the inside of there. There we go. That's pretty good. And then for this one, this has to be put in from the rear. 
down there, look. Okay, well that went a lot easier. Okay, and then we've got to pop it through. And over, there we are, onto there. And then we had that washer, don't forget, that we took off. So that washer's gonna go on. So we can push it back, and then we can get it threaded onto there using our M6 Allen key. But we can't tighten that up, we'll have to tighten it up once, it's, once the caliper's back on the bike. Okay, so that's how to disassemble the, um, on to remove and to regrease the pad carrier on this particular style of caliper. And it can be a little bit confusing because you can see here, look, you can actually undo the other one as well. Uh, but the way I've shown you is the easiest way that I've found to do it. And I'm sure that's the way that Yamaha tell you to do it. And it's important that these, this moves freely. Um, if it doesn't, then the inner pad will wear much more than the outer pad. And usually when people check the brakes, they look at the outer pad. They don't really bother about the inner pad too much. So you could be down to metal on the inner and, uh, well, fine on the, on the outer. Okay, next job is to clean up these pins that the pads float on. And we need some emery cloth for that. Okay, so when the pads are in use, these pads float up and down these pins and it's important that they can float freely so make sure that there's no corrosion on those pins so just give them a little rub around with the cloth there you go it doesn't take long if you can help it try not to take too much of the coating off because the more coating that gets worn away the more they're going to rust the next time round but you know, it does come off after a while. And you can buy new pins, they're not expensive. You know, maybe every three or four years you can put new pins on there. Just give it a little treat, look after it. Okay, so these pins will need copper paste putting on. We can't put grease on these. So we can prepare those ready to be put back in. And I'm just putting copper paste on the actual pin bit itself for now. We'll cover the other bit later on. So that's one. Someone's having some fun. Two. Okay. Now make sure you've got no copper paste on your gloves because you're going to be picking up the pads shortly. Now, on the brake pads themselves, we also add a bit of copper paste. We put a little bit wherever the pads make contact with the claw. So this is the outer pad. This is on the back. You don't want to put any copper paste or risk getting any copper paste on the friction material itself. So that's the outer pad done. Now the inner pad wants a bit of copper paste where it makes contact with the piston. Just around there, look. Okay, that's that bit done. And you'll also see, see the rub mark on there? That's where it sits against the pad carrier. So again, we're gonna, because it's a contact point, we'll put a little tiny bit of copper paste on there. Cool. Done. Right, now we can install the brake pads. So, first of all, the inner pad, the one that sits against the piston, that's now in. And the outer pad. Great stuff. So, holding those into place, we now need to thread these through. This is a little bit awkward. But you can get there. You've got to align the holes on the pads. Let's we'll do just that one out for a second. And we'll do the inner pad first. And you're actually pushing against a spring that's in there. So that's why you've got to force it a little bit. And the second pad, once you've got one in, you can use it as a pivot point so it becomes quite easy. Okay, just. Uh, Push that one back a little bit, so we can get the second pad in, there we go. Now for the outer brake pad, let's drop that down there. Now when you're installing that, make sure it's as close to the claws as you can, because there's actually a little, a little clip on the, um, 
on the spring in there to keep it to keep the gap where your brake disc goes. And if you if you have them both together, you can end up bending the clip by forcing it to get the disc to go in. And then you'll find the e-brakes bind. Okay. Oh, I know what we're gonna do. Oh, I forgot. Okay. So we're gonna put now a little bit of copper paste on those threads. And that's going to help later on, in a year's time or whenever, to get those back out of the, out of the caliper body. Otherwise, they can seize in. So whoever, whoever services these brakes in a year's time will thank me immensely. They won't know it's me, but they'll thank me. Right. So everything's back together, although a number of bolts are not tight. And now we can refit the caliper onto the bike. Now, remember I said that these two retaining bolts, these need a thread lock putting on. Okay, a little bit of thread lock on there. You don't need very much. That's the beauty of thread lock. It's, it's less is more, so to speak. Okay, that's the top one in. Now the bottom one. Okay, now uh, we still need to tighten up the, um, the two pad retaining bolts. That's these two here, so we'll give those a little tweak now. One, two, and we also need to tighten up the larger of the two sliders, which is this one here. So pop that into there, give it a tweak. There we go. And lastly, we can put that little rubber rubber grommet back on the bag, just to seal everything away. There we go. And before we finish, what we need to do is pump the front brake, just to make sure that that caliper, the piston's pushed out back to its normal position again. So there you go, that's how I service a caliper, a floating caliper on a quad bike. And there are lots of variations. I've already done videos covering uh, doing a brake overhaul on that Yamaha Viking, one of them that I did, well, I think it was a blue one, um, on the front calipers and the rear calipers, and even the handbrake caliper as well, the um, mechanical caliper for that. There's different styles of calipers and there's tricks as to how to disassemble them and put them back together again, and the order that you do it in, because once you've taken the caliper off and it's in your hand, it's then very difficult to undo any more bolts on it because it, you've got nothing to hold it with. So it's best to try and crack everything off that you need to undo whilst the caliper's still bolted to the vehicle. Okay, so we used grease on the uh, sliders. We used copper paste on the uh, pad retaining pins uh, and on the pad retaining pin threads and on the back and the contact points of the brake pads. And then we used um, thread lock on the two caliper retaining bolts, the ones that hold the caliper onto the knuckle joint. So there's three different kinds of stuff we used there. Really important. Uh, one thing we didn't do on this video was to pop the piston out and inspect the piston. Doesn't need it. It's working absolutely fine. It's very clean and tidy in there. Um, if you want to see that being done, then check out the Yamaha Viking videos. Okay, well, if you have any questions or comments, then please leave them down at the bottom, and I'll do my very best to, uh, to get back to you as soon as I can. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, then why not? And then that way you join the whole Andy Mechanic thing, and you'll get notifications as and when any new videos get uploaded. And who knows, one or two of them may be of help to you. Don't cost you anything, it's all free of charge. I do it out of the goodness of my heart. Okay, cheers for now. Thanks for watching. Over and out.